shell drill is a daily vitamin and what I mean by a daily vitamin, if you're coaching a rep team, it's something that you've got to do weekly. Pro teams do this nearly every training. Brian Gorgian coaches the hell out of this drill and he does it uh, every single day. And it's an important drill defensively as a team to help kids understand where they're supposed to stand and what they're supposed to do in particular scenarios in a basketball game. All right, now there's many different ways to do it, but the way I'm gonna basically show you shell drill, I'll show you how to break it down and extract from it what you want. All right, so just understanding how to build layers, because it's very common when you look up drills on the internet, especially for shell drill, and you're seeing something from a European and American coach, they don't have the same context we do. American and European coaches nearly coach their team every day. Sometimes for two hours a day, sometimes they have two a days, and sometimes they have three a days, especially if they're a college coach. We don't get that luxury. We get one a weeks, and that's for two hours. So how can we uh, make our training sessions as efficient as possible to try and extract from it exactly what we need? That's why as Australian coaches, we need to understand how to layer and understand the why we're doing that particular layer. Uh, a great saying that I love that I've shared here on the sheet by a, uh, by a, a technical director of a uh, English Premier League soccer team, Rasmus Ankerson, he, say, he says that constraints lead to innovation. So the constraints of having uh, the constraints of having one training session a week means that we have to do shell drill uniquely. And we can even add constraints in a shell drill that will allow us to get from it what we want. The last saying I've got up here, a great quote, who plus why equals what plus how. So what am I going to get? Uh, what am I gonna teach the kids and how am I gonna teach it? Who are the kids and why are they playing for? So this is an under 18 representative team. So they're putting, uh, they're trying to challenge themselves to be as best as they can for the age that they, uh, they are. And they're probably doing it because they're having a lot of fun. And it's very typical of boys that they always want to challenge themselves. So if they want to challenge themselves and they want to have fun doing it, then I'm going to try and make this as competitive as possible. No one's going to get injured, touch wood. All right, so uh, the way I'm gonna show you this as well, let me show you what shell drill looks five on five, and then I'll show you ways to break it down. And there's many different ways to do shell drill. So uh, I have four light, four black, perfect. Gents, I only need one basketball. Seven of you can put a basketball down. Give me the four, whoop. Give me the four light around the three point line. <clears throat> All right, and then can I please get the four dark to defend them? And mate, can I, do you have stress factors in your back? Can I just get you to stand here? Are you okay to walk? Yeah, yeah no running for you, mate. <clears throat> so what is shell drill? There's many different ways to put it in different alignments to get from it what you want. We can put it in a five out alignment. So five out meaning five people outside the three point line. So you come stand at the top, you go stand on the wing, you go stand on the wing, perfect, you stand in the corner, and then where's my injured buddy? You're over here, I'm on the light team. All right, so we could play five out and we could do shell drill in a five out scenario. All right, so if the ball was with me in the corner, what's your name? Cooper, Cooper would put pressure on the ball. Put pressure on me, mate, you're not gonna hurt me. You, one pass away, could do one of two things. You could deny the lane by getting a foot and a hand in the passing lane, chin on shoulder, right? You could do that way, and your distance would be one third away from him and two thirds from the ball, all right? Fine, perfect. Now you would position yourself in a flat triangle on the elbow. You'd be high split. So a split line is the invisible line down the middle of the court. So you'd probably be just below the nail and position yourself where you can see both your player and the basketball at the same time. You're gonna be on low split, all right? You're gonna do the same thing. 
Now, just with rules, we've got one pass away rules, we've got two pass away rules, one, two, and then the people on the further side that are two passes, uh, two passes or more, they're on split line. So when we defend and shell drill, fellas, not only do you have to be in stance, but you have to carry your hands. So your hands have to be wide as well. So show me that. Coaches, can you tell me why it's important to teach defense to have their hands up? What was, it, what was that, coach? Deflect passes. passes, put your hands up, Coop. Oh, well. <laughs> Try that one more time, hit the ball on purpose. Yes, so you can deflect a pass. The second thing it does, it intimidates me, it shrinks the floor. What's your name? Braden. If Braden starts to cut towards the rim and I try to pass it, then his hands are already prepared to try to steal the basketball, right? So it's more intimidating. It's very common. A lot of people defend with their arms to the side. Bad habit we've got to get rid of from under 12s above. Got to defend with your hands up if your player doesn't have the basketball. But if you've coached under 12s before, the majority of the kids would have no idea who they're marking. So it's like, who are you guarding? I don't know. Well, figure it out. <laughs> and then just do that first. <laughs> so you could do it f uh, five out. The next alignment you could do, you could do four out, one in. So we need both seams. The seams are the elbow extensions outside the three-point line. So that's one seam, ball with you, Braden. You're on the other seam, you're in a corner, and then I'm in the post, you in the corner. All right, so the rules are the same. He has the basketball side front me, so put a bar arm on my hip, good, thumb down. Good, perfect. And then you're gonna, you're gonna deny, you're on one pass away. So one third, two thirds, foot and hand in the passing lane. Perfect, good. So. Uh, Tilt your body so your closest foot is in the passing lane and then your chest faces your player. Perfect, all right? And then you're gonna be in the fill position. Fill means F-I-L, foot in lane. The lane is the key. So you're, the way you're gonna position yourself, back to the, to the rim, yeah. and then one hand points towards the ball, one hand points towards your player, and plus your hands are up as well, bingo. So you could do it in a four out, one in formation, right? The other way you could do it is in a three out, two in formation. Show me a three out, three out, two in. Give me another post player. Perfect, good, you're at the point. You're at the wing, fantastic, you're at the wing. Good, now get in your spots. Now pass the wing over here, what's your name? Finn. Finn, Finn. perfect. So Finn, you're gonna side front me, then force me towards the baseline. Yeah. Good, then you'd be on split line. Split line over here, just below the nail, and you'd be on split line as well. Perfect, back faces the rim, hand points towards him and the basketball. So there's different alignments we can practice. One thing you have to understand coaches, which alignment are you going to use? Probably the one that is most prevalent in your division. Fellas, you can relax. So in under 12s, most likely you might use a five out alignment. There might be a lot of under 12 teams doing a uh, five out offense. If under 14s to under 18s, you might do four out, one in. Uh, youth league and above, where there's extra tall people, you could probably use a three out, two in formation and get two posts in so the kids can get an understanding or the guys or the girls can get an understanding of how to position themselves with two posts. All right, now, what are we going to work on? Let me show you the uh, first one. Um, I only need eight of you, so you can chill out and uh, rest your back, Coop. What have got to get you back into action for Coach Luke, right? Uh, Brayden, you're in uh, the seam. Get in the seam and get a basketball as well, please. Uh, give me the four uh, dark players with a basketball. The four light players don't need a basketball. <coughs> And then the four dark players, you can go to the corner. Uh, Finn, corner. All right, the four dark players start on the edge of the key. Now here's what you're gonna do. Uh, my mistake, you don't need a basketball. Now we're gonna, in shell drill, we're gonna practice our closeouts first. Now we spoke about closeout technique in the previous in the previous clinic. Now here's what you're gonna do. Uh, the two boys up top, you're gonna to face each other. The two boys at the back, you're gonna face up court. You're gonna hold the ball far out in front of you. And when I say go, you're gonna pitter patter your feet. 
When you pitter patter your feet, I'm gonna clap my hands. That means the drill starts. When the drill starts, you pass to your partner. And then you're gonna bounce off your inside foot, turn your hips, two sprints into a closeout. You guys know what a closeout is? Sprint to your player, pitter patter your feet, one arm's length apart with both hands high in the sky, staying in a low stance. So let's do a walking demo so we know what we're doing. So I'll say go, pitter patter your feet, then pass, close out. Okay, something was missing. Aha! So we heard the squeaks, but we need to hear the vocals. Why are the vocals important, boys? Why is communication important in a, in a, uh, in a basketball game? Let people, know where you are. let people know where you are. Yeah, let your teammates know where you are. Imagine if this place was packed out with a thousand people and you had no idea what your jobs were. You gotta scream at the top of your lungs. I don't expect you to scream, excuse me, I don't expect you to scream at the top of your lungs now, but I expect you to get in the habit of commentating. Yeah, it's like the horse races, right? Oh, I'm coming close, you out, ball, 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 I'm guarding the ball, everyone. Does everyone understand I'm guarding the ball? It's like, you might look like a bit of a schizophrenic, but it's fine, all right? You need to commentate your job. So here's one, let's go full speed. Ready, go. Pitter patter, pitter patter, go. Pass, close out, good. Now switch rolls. Ready, three, two, one, go. Pass, close out, good. Switch rolls, ready? Go. Close out, good. And now, not bad, uh, realistically, if I was coaching this team, I'd get between reps quicker because the basketball game is played in transition offense and defense. Someone shoots it, you better get the ball or you better get back. All right, so we've got to practice those habits in training. Now this time, the person on the catch, you're gonna to fake to shoot it. Basketball, please, Braden. What's your name? Ashton. Ashton. If I fake to shoot it, get in my grill. So belly to belly, arms straight up to the sky. All right, and then you'll call ball, ball, ball. Like belly to belly. Ball, 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 ball. All right, if you, if you jab step, that means you've got to jump back. Jump back. Good, jump back towards the rim, and then your nose has to be in line with my shoulder. All right, so ball here, you're in my grill. Jump up, ball, 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 good, ball. jab step, jump back. Jump back. And then your hands, if I'm positioned like this, yes, great. This hand, putting pressure on the dribble. So it's down here. Oh, yeah. That's called the dig hand. So that hand for that. We're trying to deflect the pass. So here, ball, ball, ball. Try a jab step this way. Excellent. Shot. And then we switch. All right. We'll switch when I say switch. So let's do a walking, uh, walking demo so you know what we're doing. Ready? Go. Close out. All right. Now there was a problem with the uh, commentating, what was that? Well, you only said it once, right? Like you were to say it throughout the whole drill. Ball, 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 ball's here, ball's here, ball's here, ball, 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 ball. Come on, switch rolls. Three, two, one, go. Good, 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 keep talking, Brayden. Keep talking, Brayden. Good, and switch. <clears throat> no dribbles, just jab, step, shot. Jab, step, shot. Ready, go. Excellent, good jab, and freeze. So pretend like you're gonna shoot. If he shoots, up in his grill, belly to belly. Good, ready, switch. Go. Good, excellent, excellent, good, good. Well done, and freeze, freeze. Now, just a little tip on defense. Boys, you tell me, when you're guarding an offender, what are you looking at? His chest. You look at his chest? Do you? Sometimes. Sometimes, okay. Does anyone else look at anything else? There's no wrong answers. It's all learning. So you don't look at anything? Where on the body? Yeah, here's one. What part of the body of a player can't you, uh, doesn't move, well, well, moves the least? That was a really bad question. What else? Your sternum, right? Your sternum. You can't fake your sternum out. <laughs> yeah, too much movement. So when you look at an offensive player, look at their sternum. Ready, here we go, switch, last one. Go. 
Good pass, close out. Watch your sternum. Good, keep moving your feet. Jump into him, jump into him, jump into him. That's a boy. Now jump back, now jump in. Good, now jump back, good, good, good. And freeze, freeze, good boys. Slow to start, faster to win. Well done, mate, all right? So that's, uh, that's why we can practice close out footwork, right? Uh, with five people, the other two will just be on the baseline. If I had five or six, then you could still just do this two on two, all right? Now the next progression in this drill, uh, defending the dribble in this, right? So this time on the catch, this time on the catch, we're still gonna do this. When I say dribble, the person with the ball is going to try and use three dribbles to get in the key where you are. So you're trying to get around the blue line in the key. You're trying to get around the block. You're trying to get around the block. Defense, you've got to try and prevent them from getting inside the key without fouling. So without fouling, no pushing, no decking, no kicking, all right? Sliding, sprinting, you carry your hands the whole time. Let's do a walking demo. So go. Pitter patter, pitter patter, pitter patter, clap, pass, close out, and then I'll say dribble, good, then we're trying to slide and freeze, freeze. Now I said this in the last clinic, and I know you weren't here, so you probably didn't hear it. Here's your rules to the slide. You're defending your player. Your nose is in line with their outside shoulder. If it's in line, that means slide. If it's broken and the line is between the shoulder and the rim, that means run, yeah. all right? So you're always trying to keep this line. So you move, good, good, still in line sliding, but as soon as it breaks, uh, then I'm running and I've got to try and beat him there. All right, let's do another walking demo. Yes, yeah, switch. Walking demo, walking demo, not full speed yet. Go. Close out. Good, jump in. Jump in, Finn. Brayden, sorry. No, sorry, so the clap means close out, but then just be stationary until I say go, and then the go means dribble. All right, try that one more time. I, it's a lot of instruction. Sorry, fellas, for a school night. Go. Clap. Close out. Dribble, dribble. Run or slide, run or slide. Good, better. Good, yes, better. What's your name? Finn. Finn? Oh yeah, Finn, right. I was calling someone else Finn. You got good core strength, mate, well done. Yeah, well done. Uh, now, fellas, you've been in the same spot. Change to a different spot with a different partner. Five, four, three, two, one, go. No, as in go, as in pitter patter. The clap is the pass. Face each other. Oh, getting confused, oh. Pass. Good, close out. Ball, 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 ball. Dribble. Good, got him. Stay in line, good, good. Now, uh, Ashton. Ashton, sorry Ashton. If he beats you, sprint your butt back in front of him, yeah? Don't give up on the possession. Ready, last one, rotate. Go. Good, close out. Good, dribble! Defend the first three dribbles! Great, Brayden! Great, Brayden! Good, good. All right, now here's what I'm gonna add, all right? Once you finish your three dribbles, then you're gonna shoot, right? And then you're gonna shoot and then box out. So on the shot, Finn, you're here. The rules with the box out. Now, if he shoots it, once he, I see that, I'm gonna put a foot Oh, came back to you, it's like a magnet, mate. You're gonna put a foot in between his feet, hit him with a bar arm. If he goes in front of you, you turn that way, yeah? Backside on him, keep him out without fouling. If he goes behind you, then you just reverse pivot, keep him out that way. If he's bigger than you, then just do the Charles Barkley rule. Just stay sideways, put a bar arm on him and try to just keep him out and catch with the inside hand. All right? All right, here we go. Only a couple reps. Ready, go, pitter patter. Go. Stationary, jump in. Jump in, good, jump in. Dribble. Then shoot at the end. Box out, box out, box out. Not bad, not bad. One more time, switch rolls. Ready, go. Good, good, dribble. 
Then shoot, box out at the end, box out, don't forget to box out. Now, fellas, don't forget to be physical, yeah? Either a bar arm or your backside on him, yeah? Now, it's good that you're chasing the basketball, but just for the sake of this part of the drill, the habit of just burying him, all right? But I like the mentality, hey, your ball first. Now, this time, uh, you don't need a basketball. You can put your basketball to the side, you can put your basketball to the side. Now, exact same setup, now we just go two on two. And what we're practicing in two on two are one pass away rules. All right, here's how this drill is going to work. Uh, ball with the offense. Uh, in fact, no, sorry, ball with Ashton, ball with Ashton. All right, now you're gonna face each other. You two are gonna face each other. Exact same rules. You two working together, right? Versus these two. But it's not live two on two. It's just gonna be a live one on one, yeah? You're gonna pass back and forth pass back and forth, and then you're going to be light on your feet as you do it, and then I'm going to clap my hands. Freeze. If you have the ball, you pass to him and you close out. You're going to get to one pass away position. Now, there are a couple pa one pass away positions we can go. If you want to be aggressive and get steals, but sacrifice the back cut, then you can get into a denial. This defense is still great because it puts pressure one pass away, but then this kid can just go, yeah, I'm going to get a catch. Not and then two points, that's what you're sacrificing. Or you could be in a flat triangle. Yeah, flat triangle, backside faces the rim, point your pistols, ball player, yeah, and you're gonna be about halfway. Now, you gotta be close enough, you don't wanna sink all the way back here, because if you sink all the way back here, you're not putting any pressure on the passing lane or the player on the catch, all right? So be close enough where you can put pressure on the pass and pressure on him on the catch. All right, now you're putting pressure here. Right, you two, you two, you're gonna keep passing back and forth, pass, as soon, oh, sorry, ball back here with Braden. As soon as you see the ball leave fingertips, you're gonna be closing, you're gonna begin closing him out. Because by the time he catches, you wanna be here, ball, 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 ball. Because he might shoot, if that's Steph Curry, 40 points. All right, as soon as the ball leaves his fingertips, you're gonna jump towards the ball, Ashton. Jumping towards the ball is still relevant, coaches, because we can't get cuts over the top. Leaves fingertips, jump towards the ball, and then get into a similar position he was. All right, just do a walking demo from here. So you're up in his grill, ready, pass. Good, pass. Now, we'll just, oh, I wasn't clear. Be in a flat triangle for now, you two, instead of deny. All right, so ball here, good, flat triangle. Keep calling ball. And freeze. Then when I say live, when I say live, it's one-on-one -on -one with the person who has the basketball. And then you'll be, uh, no, don't be out, but he's not gonna do anything. If Finn decides to dribble you this way, then you're gonna do something called stunt and recover. You're gonna do a hand fake in his face and then get back to your player because you don't want him to get a catch because the help for him is behind him, right? That's a lot of instruction, we good? All right, just do me, uh, just do a uh, dribble demo, Finn. So dribble at him, good, fake, and then sprint your recover, yeah, excellent. Now, a lot of kids, a lot of juniors, even at a state level, they'll do the help part, but they won't do the recover part. They want to help, everyone wants to try to get a steal, and then they forget about their own play, and their play's already underneath the rim. Happens all the time, all right? So let's do a walking demo that side as well. So just uh, on the edge of the key. On the edge of the key, good, excellent, so do that. You copy. And go, pass, good. Keep going till I say live. Good, jump to the ball. And, and this side, this side, freeze. And freeze, freeze, freeze. So just a teaching point over here. I don't want you guys to keep going and beat yourselves up. All right, so you're here, pressure on the basketball. Flat triangle, not deny, flat triangle, yeah, so halfway. Pressure close enough to steal the pass and pressure to get him on the catch. Yeah. All right? And now, you pass, go. Now, you get into a flat triangle, not a denial. Not yeah, open stance. So point pistols, boom, boom, close enough to pressure the pass. All right, pass again this way. Good, excellent, good. Now, if your player doesn't have the ball and you're in the flat triangle one pass away, what can you say to your teammate that's guarding the ball? What kind of help? Yeah, help right, help left. Or you could say, oh, what's your name? Oliver. You could say, I've got you, Ollie. I've got you, I've got you on your right. I've got you, I've got your help, mate. All right? Uh, let's do a real demo. And then we'll get into live one-on-one. -on -one. Ready? 
So, oh, from the edge of the key, yeah. Go, pass back and forth, pitter-patter, pitter-patter, go! Pass, close out, spots, good, good. Good, live, live one-on-one, live one-on-one. Oh, bucket, bucket, stunt, then get back to him, all right? Now, remember on the shot, box out as well, switch over. Two out, two in, two out, two in, ready? Go. Pass. Good, close out. Good. Good, jump to the ball. Jump to the ball. Live. Good, now recover. No, one-on-one, one-on-one. -on -one. Throw it back to Ollie. Go, Ollie. One-on-one. -on -one. Good, now recover. Oh, nice. And one. Oh, bad luck. Across the face. Now, this time, now you're going to practice skip passes, right? So, now... Give me the light team on the outside. The dark team on the inside, throw them the ball fin. Ashton, you're on the edge of the key. Uh, what's your name again? James, you're gonna be Finn's partner, all right? And then, what's your name? Toby. Toby, you're gonna be Braden's partner, all right? So, uh, exact same thing. Pass, pass, pass. On go, you're gonna pass to your closest. All right, so you pass to Finn. Now, you, and what's your name? Billy. Billy, you're going to be on the same team, right? So you're going to be passing to James. James is going to be passing back. Now, if the ball is here, just throw the ball to, uh, to what's your name? As. As? What's that short for? Asriel. Asriel or Ezreal? Asriel. Ah, very cool. You're the first Asriel I've ever met in my life. How cool is that? So ball is there with Finn. Uh, Toby, you're going to be on split line if the ball is over there. All right, so back to the rim, point your pistols, arms up. Can you see both? Yeah. Now try and position yourself where you can see both without moving your head too much. Yeah, excellent, beautiful, beautiful. Now, you're gonna be passing to Toby on the pass. Skip it all the way to Toby. Now, on that, yeah, perfect. You're closing out, you're sprinting to high split. Yeah, high split line. And then position yourself the exact same way, Ollie. Yeah, stance back to the rim, pointing your pistols. Make sure you can see both without moving your head too much. Coach, coaches, the, the part of help defense that is very helpful is getting kids to learn to put their head on a swivel. Yeah, they've got to make sure they're paying attention to both the basketball and their player. But then the next key is positioning themselves where they don't have to move their head too much. All right, so getting them to figure that part out. All right, so let's do a walking demo. Now, sometimes the basketballs will rock up with the wrong person, so just fix that yourselves, all right? So that means Ashton and Asriel are gonna be on the same team, and so you two are passing to each other. Ready? Ball back here, please, James. So Ollie and Ashton face each other, and then Toby and uh, Asriel face each other. Ready? Oh, uh, Toby. Billy. Oh, God, crikey. Billy, Toby, got it, all right, Billy, Toby. Action, pass, 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 go. Then you're passing diagonal. You're on split line, Ashton. Good, jump towards the ball. Now you're on high split. Good, 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 good. Excellent, excellent. And freeze, freeze. Just a teaching point for someone. So Toby, you're here, ball up. You're on the fill position, fill position. So one in, one out. Back faces the rim and then point your pistols down in stance. All right, excellent, excellent. Now, don't bend over at the hips, but bend your knees so your hips are down, so that way your eyes are up. Yeah, that's a boy. Look at that strong athlete, mate. All right, now when I say live, the person who has the ball is gonna play one-on-one. -on -one. Offense is out, defense can help. All right, so if you're dribbling towards the middle, James, who's your help, Billy? Yeah, there you go, all right. Do you, yeah, 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 you leave that one alone because you're gonna be guarding Toby, yeah, yeah. all right? And then your helping buddy's Ashton, yeah. all right? All right, back to the beginning, fellas. One more demo. One more demo, then we'll move on to the next one. Ready, pass, 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 and go. Good pass, diagonal. Good, good talk. Keep going. Now, it's organized chaos. Organized chaos, it's a good thing. And... Live, one on one from that spot. Get it and go, Braden. get it and go. Good, excellent. Yeah, why not, James, shoot it if you want. Splash. 
Oh, bad luck, mate. Bad luck. Yeah, the air's a bit thin. I understand. I understand. All right, fellas. Uh, give each other high fives. Well done. Well done. All right, so coaches, that's a... Uh, that's a... Sorry, where am I? That's a one-on-one uh, -on -one and a two-on-two -two combo that you can use. And the reason we use the one-on-one -on -one to help kids with the individual skill defensively out of shell drill. The close out, the slide on the first dribble, and the box out, all right? Now, and then if I do it two-on-two, -two, then I'm helping kids get better at that skill one pass away. Yeah, so they're jumping towards the ball, very important jumping towards the ball, making sure they know how to defend a stationary player, and then what do they do as soon as the ball leaves fingertips? And they have to react to the ball leaving fingertips. Uh, the, the, the way I, I learned this from a Canadian coach, the, one of the best ways you can really tell whether a kid gets it or not is, is a healthy acronym called PVAD from coach Mike McKay. PVAD stands for position, vision, anticipation, and decision making. So are they in the right position? But remember, possession over position. You've got to get the ball before you worry about where you're going to get the catch. Uh, vision, what are they looking at? And what decisions are they trying to make? Anticipation, can they see the next move ahead? And then the decision making. Do they make the right decision with the information that's in front of them? All right. So breaking down the teaching points of each catch offensively and defensively, you can really help your kids um, reach the goal that they want to try to reach. Now, uh, let me show you a four on four, the four on four shell drill, but uh, I'm going to put a whole bunch of funky layers on this that you can kind of extract what you want to extract. So we only need one basketball. Ball up with Toby. Do you guys need a drink, by the way? You're good. Sweet, all right, uh, let's switch over. Dark, you're on offense, light, you're on defense. Ah, uh, dark, oh, yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, light on defense, dark on offense. Now, the first, uh, the next concept, can you move that ball please, Ashton? The next concepts I wanna introduce you to, throw the ball over to Billy, uh, the principles of high split and low split. All right, so uh, Toby, you're gonna to be in a flat triangle, backside face of the rim, point your pistols, close enough to the passing lane, close enough to close him out. All right, now let's say James got smashed on the dribble, right, and Billy just blew past him. Billy the kid blew past him. Uh, so you'll be on high split, uh, Finn, and then Braden will be on low split. Now, the cue for help to help if you're on low split, you're helping any drive that comes in your direction, right? So as soon as you see numbers on the player's chest, then that's when you've got to anticipate to come and help out. So James got beaten, boof, you see numbers, you try, really hard skill coaches, but you try to meet him outside the key. Yeah, wall up that way. Now, while he's catching up, and freeze there, James. Someone needs to help the helper, the person on low split. That's gonna be the person on high split. The person on high split always helps the helper. That movement they're gonna do is called a sink and fill. So Finn's gonna sink and fill low split and point his pistols. Basketball and player. And the reason you would do that, so Ashton doesn't come underneath the rim for an alley-oop. In case Billy shoots it, you can get a rebound. Because if you stayed here, then you'll get out number two to one. All right, you're out number two to one any rate. Now, let's say Billy decided to throw it long. Freeze. The first pass in an outnumbered situation is the person by himself. The person by themselves would take the first pass, then the second pass would be by the person that got beaten in the first place because they'd be sprinting their backside to get to the other side. So if Ollie didn't like that shot and you kicked it on, good, then that's James's new matchup. If you help on the driver, then don't rotate because if you leave him and he still has the ball, what's he gonna do? Do we want that to happen? Not on Braden's watch, no way. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. You're gonna pass it around, we're gonna pass it around. I'm, uh, you're just gonna move on my command of the pass 
and then eventually you will get it where you can pass and make the decisions yourselves. And then when I say drive on someone's catch, the person defending the driver is gonna get beaten on purpose. All right, then we're gonna practice the low split help and the high split sink and fill. All right, so Ashton has the basketball, where would you stand? Good, good. Now, in terms of communication, what will you say, uh, James? Finn would say? No. You would say? Split. A high split, and you would say? Low split. low split. But it's gotta be productive, right? It's like, James, I've got you, I'm on low split. All right, I'm on your left, or behind you, or on your right, or on top of you, or underneath you, whatever, mate. All right, then on pass, on the pass, everyone jumps to the ball. As soon as the ball leaves fingertips, anticipate it and jump towards the ball. Remember coaches, defense, 90% effort, 10% technique. All right, pointing your pistols, pass, jump to your new job, so that's a closeout. So on your closeout, jump on the first step, jump on the first step, then sprint the next. All right, so you're up there, Toby. So in stance, Brayden, so you're very high. So yes, correct. One foot in, one foot out of the key. And then you'd be in a flat triangle here. Then once it goes to the corner, then, then I'm gonna, correct, yeah. correct. Ready? Go. Good. Excellent. Good. Good. Now we can go a little bit faster. All right. Now let's communicate now that we've done a walking demo. Offense, get down in a stance so you look like basketball players. Now I know this is a defensive drill coaches, but the offensive players don't get a holiday. It's like, look like a basketball player. Bend your knees, wrists snap back, hands up. All right. It's not a All right, ready. Offense, look like pro basketball players. Defense, ready, talk, action, pass. Good, keep talking, pass. Good, good. Drive, drive. Good, recover. Good, excellent. And freeze, freeze, freeze. And that's exactly what we're, what we're trying to do. Now, I know in a real demo, James wouldn't get so beaten so easily. Isn't that, isn't that right, Jimbo? Yeah, he wouldn't get beaten so easily. But uh, to practice the concept of low split help and then high split sink and fill, that's what we want. All right, switch jobs. Light offense, dark on defense. Let's see how they go. Ready, down in stance, offense, James, pro basketball player. Go, pass. Ashton, talk. Good, 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 excellent. Drive. Good, stun recover, as stun recover, play on, drive. Get beaten, Billy. Good, that's yours, Ollie. Rotate, rotate someone, rotate someone, good, play on. Now try and get a basket here, we're playing live. We're playing live, recover, oh my God. You might need to get new shoes, mate. He just burned ya. And Billy, on the stunt recover, hand fake in his vision and then sprint back to him. All right, so fellas, don't get beaten off the dribble now, switch over. Finn just got a wide open layup and uh, low split wasn't there to help. Now, if, there, if there's a drive here, basketball please, uh, flat triangle, you're in the fill position, so you wouldn't be in split on here, you'd be in the fill position. And then on my dribble towards the middle, you'd stunt recover, pretend I beat you, stunt recover, and then the help would come this way. But who's sinking and filling, anticipating that pass? Yeah. yeah, Toby. All right, so if I pass it, booyah, then Finn, you might rotate and then he'd stay on me. All right? The part of defense where defenders don't know where to go, coaches, that's called a scramble situation. If you ever hear a coach call out a scramble situation, think, uh-oh. That's bad, scrambles are bad. Yeah, even at the pro level, scrambles can be ugly. But at least practicing the concepts and a basic understanding of how to rotate out of it, it doesn't matter how you rotate out of it, the rotation is completely up to you. I'm just showing you one of the most basic ones. All right, let's do one more demo and then we'll get a drive from a corner. And freeze, 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 basketball with me. Let me show you an adjustment to get the defense more switched on from the beginning. Because I said go, and then the defense was like, oh, go, okay. yeah, okay. All right, so uh, stand around the charge circle. Face yeah, face me. I'm gonna bounce the ball. I picked this up from coach Will Lopez, who's a, who's a, who's a Bankstown, New South Wales gentleman, and is now AC for the Cairns Taipans. All right, so offense, 
down in catching stance, I'm going to bounce the ball. Every time you see me bounce the ball, you're going to clap. I fake. That's no bounce. So you've got to be switched on. So now we're just getting them to switch on to what's going on in front of them. Now, once I pass it out, you close out and go. Then when I say live, you're going to drive, get beaten on purpose, and then rotate and play to a score. Ready? Go. Close out. Get to your spots. Get to your spots. Good. Good. Help. And drive. Drive, get beat on purpose. Rotate, rotate, rotate. We're playing till the score. Go, Billy. Balls me, balls me. Box out. And freeze. Now, ball with Ollie. Let me show you something. Ball with Ollie. I don't care about the air ball, right? Uh, offense. If you see a shot go up on, um, on this live, Go and, get the, go and get the rebound on purpose, all right? Now, how do you box out on the weak side if your player is three meters away from you? Something called a head check and a bar arm. So if I'm here and Ollie shoots it, shoot it, Ollie. Try and get the rebound, Billy. If I, well, sorry, sorry, well, you're too quick for me, mate. Billy the kid, far out. On the shot. Yeah, I would see that. But now my head check needs to get eyes on him. Come on, Billy. And then as he's coming, I've got to get a bar arm on him because it might take me too long to then pivot and box him out this way. So I've got to get a bar arm and then try to catch it with my inside hand and two. So one more replay. Ready? Shoot it when you're ready, Billy. I mean, no chance. Ah, give me the ball. Ooh, Division seven still successful. Yes. All right. Oh man, that hurt my ankle. Thank you, Billy. All right, so ball under here, ball under here. Coop, be my passer, please. Uh, and switch over, light on offense, dark on defense, dark around the charge circle. So just bounce it twice whenever you want, after I say go, and then pass to whoever you want on offense. All right. Go, Coop. And pass. Good, close out. Talk, talk. Talk. Good. In his face. Drive. Drive. Get beaten, Ollie. Good. Stud recover, Ollie. Close out. Now we're playing live. Now we're playing live. Try and get a score. Try and get a score. Five. Four. Three. Two. Box out. Head check. Get after it. Well done. Well done, boys. Well done. So that... That head check, that head check on the weak side, very valuable. Yeah, getting kids to understand where's my player, first of all, getting them to box out and then understanding where the ball is. Uh, a lot of the times, kids might be switched off because it's very common, kids just ball watch, right? But with things like that and characteristics, small wins. So you see them switched on in training, reward them for it. It's like, yeah, great job, Ashton. Why well, to be switched on and box out? An example, all right? And that small win will build his confidence. Because something that I learn about confidence as a young coach, um, you've got to define this yourself, but whenever I watch a confident player, they have a belief that what they are doing is right. But when I watch an arrogant player, uh, an arrogant player will believe that what they're doing is right, but with no evidence behind it. So a lot of talk and no evidence. So when I watch a confident player, they'll be getting their reps in and it's like, oh, they know what they're doing. They believe in what they're doing is right. So how can I let them know what they're doing is right? The small wins, the victories. Yeah, Ashton, woohoo! And then I'm trying to get him to get, put a, he's trying to disguise it. He's trying to put a smile on his face. That's my whole goal, all right? Now, uh, that's one way. Let me show you um, uh, other ways that we can work on other layers. Uh, let's go. Same thing, right? But now offense, you're going to play live on the catch, but you are not allowed to dribble. You have to try and score without a dribble. So what are you going to do? Pass and cut. So how to defend a cut? Light, can you get on the outside? Uh, dark, can you just defend them please? Ball's here with James. If Jimmy has the ball and he passes to Finn and he decides to cut, this jumping towards the ball action is so important because if I'm Ashton, but a lazier version, James has the ball, 
and he passes and I don't jump towards ball and he cuts in front of me, you can just pass it back. Oh, damn. And then a wide open layup. All right. So ball with coop. Same thing. You are clapping on the dribble. And coaches, here's an adjustment I made. Injured player, can't get in the action. I can just use him as another layer so I can get a different angle of what I'm trying to look for. All right. So I'm just trying to make use of his time because he's a part of the team. So uh, two, two bounces, uh, coop, and then pass whenever you're ready. And then, fellas, it's live right away. Four on four, no dribble. When you're ready, coop. Good, close out, close out. Live right away, pass and cut, pass and cut. Jump towards the ball, good. Excellent, box out on the shot, box out, play on. Oh, dribble, turnover, bad fin. Ball with Coop, light on the edge of the charge circle. Five, four, three, offense, look like a pro. Drop your hips, here we go. Good, close out. Good James, keep talking. Pass and cut, pass and cut, Azriel. Good, Finn. Nice pass. You got to try and find a shot. It doesn't just have to be inside the key. Five, four, nice as, box out, and freeze. So there's another layer. No dribble, defending cuts. Cuts, very common in under 12 basketball. Now, what would you do if you had an older group with actions, right? Uh, now this time, same thing. Same thing, uh, offense. We're gonna be live when Braden catches the basketball. Here's what you're going to do. Same thing, Coop, boom, boom, but you have to pass to, the, to either person up the top, James or Braden. No, not Braden, Toby, I got you. If you pass to Toby, everyone close out. You're gonna do a dribble handoff with Braden, but you're not trying to score off it. Yeah. All right, so do a dribble handoff. Now, coaches, now we're getting into actions. You can work on whatever coverage you want. For this one, for the first one, let's just do a switch. All right, just switch, 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 switch. Brayden, once you've got it, you're gonna reverse the ball to the other side. Now, on, once it gets reversed to the other side, you're gonna do a side on ball, which is a pick and roll. So you're gonna pass it to Finn on the wing, get a catch on the wing, then you're gonna sprint up, jump stop, set a screen, and then here, you're just gonna practice a jump switch. So a jump switch, it's not switch, 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 and then you go sideways, you're gonna jump up in towards the ball and meet him, all right? Like you're very aggressively getting your McDonald's from the McDonald's drive-through. It's like, hi, oh, can I get a Big Mac? Yes, give me that Big Mac. All right, like who, whoever would do that, right? So, right, so ball back over there. When you're ready. So throw it to either person up top. So dribble handoff first. Switch it, switch it, switch. Good, switch it, jump switch. Play on, and then it's live. And freeze, freeze. Okay, so on the first dribble handoff, fellas, don't just like let it happen. At least put some pressure on the basketball and poke it out for a steal, but just you're just switching, yeah? Other, other common forms of, of defending these actions, going under, Going under, um, blitzing will do next, which is double teaming the person receiving the basketball. And you can also do a hard, sh whatever, cons whatever coverage you want, right? There's, there's multiple coverages, right? But I'm just showing you this, the simple ones and the most common ones in junior basketball. Uh, switch over and let's do another jump switch. Uh, well, on this side, the first side that gets a catch is a dribble handoff, then the second side is an on-ball, and yes, you are dribbling, and then after the on-ball, it's live. All right, when you're ready. Good. Close out, dribble handoff. Switch, switch. Talk your coverage. Talk your coverage. Good, switch. Play on. You're trying to get a score now. Trying to get a score now. Trying to get a score now. Five, four, three, two, box out. All right, now, not bad, not bad. The space stunk, but I'm not, I'm, I'm not coaching you for the space, I'm coaching you for the defense. But don't forget, this is a defensive clinic. Once a shot goes up, you still have to box out. So offense, hold your teammates accountable by chasing the offensive rebound, and then defense, head check, and be physical on someone. I don't, I'm not telling, I'm not asking you to deck them in the head. I'm just telling you to like, get contact and make sure they stay out of the key. Switch over. 
Now this time, we're gonna blitz the coverages. A blitz means you double team the ball handler, all right? Let's walk through this so you know what's going on. Ready, go. Throw it up. So dribble handoff first. So blitzes, as soon as he gets it, go and get him, go and get him, go and get him. Double team and then pass out of it. Good, then get back to your, to your player, then side on ball, and we're gonna blitz this. Good, good, then double it, double it, get rid of it, Finn, somehow, and then it's live. Good, good. All right, back to the beginning. Ball with Coop. So we're blitzing it now. So down in stance offense. Look like pro basketball players. Hands off your knees, come on, Az. Ready. Good, good, blitz, blitz, blitz. Good, good, get after it. Then play out of that. Oh, we're playing, we're playing. Azaru, where's your player? Stance. Uh oh. Three, two, recover, Ashton. Where's your player? Quickly. And box out. Good, good box out, Billy. Great box out, Azriel. Yeah, the little two cents. They did that. They did that job really, really well. All right. Uh, now, next one. Right. You okay? You got a cork? You are right? Yeah, mate. You're from Shoalhaven. They build them tough out here, don't they? Now this time. Uh, on the catch, you're playing live four and four after three passes. So you're getting the ball from Coop. One, two, three, it's live. Now we're gonna do transition defense, all right? So last one, I'll show the co coaches before we call it a night. So pass it out, get to your spots. One, two, three, now it's live from here. The shooter, the shooter, shoot, uh, everyone box out, Finn shoot it. And freeze, the shoot, I'll get it. The shooter is gonna touch the baseline. Now, in fact, instead of touching the baseline, you know, give Coop a high five instead, because he looks so lonely down there, right? Now, defense, as soon as you get it, pass the ball to Az, then you're four and four full court. Now, you're disadvantaged automatically, because I'm, the rule is the shooter is gonna give Coop a high five. So that means, Whoever boxes you out, that's the person you're guarding in the next possession. Now, you're gonna be on offense. That means you've got a free sprint ahead, right? Yes! So what would you do, James? Yeah, you'd sprint backwards. Your biggest priority in transition defense is just to get back, right? So everyone sprint. Get back first, finally play next. But if your, part, if your play that box you out gets the ball, you're gonna to have to dog the basketball, which basically means Put the ball under pressure so you slow it down, get him to dribble, the dribble takes time, and then try to get him to pass sideways and not up the court, yeah? That's a rule that we have for my youth league team, right? Try and get the ball to get past sideways. We're still not very good at it, but they know that. I tell them all the time, all right? So, ball with Coop. Let's do a walking demo so we know what we're doing. Last one, coaches, and we'll call it a night. Good, pass, three passes, then live. Three passes and live. Good, we're playing, box out, box out. James, high five, James, high five. Good, slow the ball. Good, you're gonna have to sort it out. And freeze. Now let's talk about transition rules real quick. Uh, who had the ball, who brought up the ball? Was that Azriel? Azriel, you got the ball. Who was dogging Azriel? So you're here. So rules, rules, rules. The shell drill rules that we had in the half court also apply in the full court, right? So if Azriel was on this side and Billy was running the lane, Brayden, you deny that pass, all right? Let's pretend also, uh, who, who gave the high five, Jimbo? So Jimbo, you're back there. And let's pretend Ashton was running down the middle. So if the ball's on this side, Finn would be in a field position because it's exactly like shell drill, but just extended. So that way, by Ashton standing here, he's taking away the next closest pass and the hardest pass is the one furthest on the other side of the court, which means it gives me time to go close out and time means that James can get back. All right, now uh, Ezreal, start from the base, uh, start from the free throw line, and then let's go from here. Ready, deny, fill position, go! Get back Jimbo! Slow the ball, good, oh! 
Turnover. That's exactly what we want. Throw it back to the throw it back to Coop. Let's do one more demo. It was arm day. Switch over. It was arm day. Oh, yeah, yeah right. It was arm day. Here we go. Maybe you need to have more vegetable days then. Ready, when you're ready. Good, close out. Good. Three passes and live. Box out. High five, Billy. High five, Billy. Slow the ball. Oh, well done. Oh, that was a nice finish. Nice pass, Jimbo. You ever seen assistant and basketball game coaches? I learned this from coach Robbie McKinley at the COE. Uh, Whenever you see an assist into a score, always praise the assist first. Great pass, Jim Jimbo. Yeah, great pass. Yeah, nice finish, Toby. But great pass, Jimbo. 